I think the first inspiration is my work as a journalist. I've worked in a lot of different places, uh, in, in war zones, conflict zones. I've covered police as a, as a young reporter. I worked at Interpol, which is the world's largest police organization. And because I spent a lot of time with police, it was a natural thing for me to use some of that material in my work. I was out uh, in the tsunami disaster zones as part of my work for Interpol. It became one of the world's largest ever forensic scenes. They were intensely interested in identifying bodies and identifying people and stories and linking families to their lost loved ones. It occurred to me that it would be a lovely story if someone, for some reason, was trying to prevent the identification of one of those bodies. And that really yielded the book. Identification at the best of times is very hard. It's, it's quite indescribably hard, actually, to pick a body out of, say, 3,000 and somehow even just physically identify these people. How do you find out who's who in a world where everybody's moving all the time and where really it's a society of strangers? I began investigating the, the history of fingerprinting, for example, and therefore fingerprint squads in, in police and so forth. And the DNA people who compete very heavily with the fingerprint people on, on scenes like this, and also the dental forensic people. These are all sort of con competing schools, if you like, in international uh, criminal investigation. They're very proud of what they do. Each, each side of that has a very interesting history and a very, very interesting technical um, element which I tried to get on top of through my work at Interpol, but also in my reading. There were a lot of really very, very emotional and almost hysterical people demanding that they get bodies back so they could bring them home. And that character you're referring to, Charlotte Stockey, her mother, I think is quite typical. People just simply can't deal with the fact that they're not going to be able to dispose of the body in a respectful way and do the proper grieving that, that one does. I wanted to examine what one does with information that is gathered, what, what the meaning of the information is, how it's to be shared, with whom, and especially what are the consequences of information gathering and sharing. If you look at the three books together, you'll see that Delaney develops in the sense that he realizes more and more that simply gathering information is not sufficient. It's not morally sufficient and it's not professionally sufficient for him anymore. He, he wants to be more in control of what the consequences are of that information and the sharing of that information.